in this episode, please join us as we visit Jen Glenson of Encinitas. This, this, is, a, this is a nice visit from Tom. Yeah, okay. We're going down the way I usually go. Be careful, Glenn. Yep. So Glenn had a knee replacement, so I would have had this video a little earlier, but uh, we're here now. So as, as I said, Tom, there are works in progress, and I think the, the journey is the fun part. And final products are as important as just training and keeping them alive and healthy. So I've gotten smaller trees now, going more shoheen, uh, and most of these are volunteers from the uh, front yard, the uh, Procumbas Nanas. They ground layer really easily, so this was a volunteer from up front. So why are you going to shoheen now? Just because I'm getting old and my, my back is hurting and my body, I can't lift these things. <laughs> Boy, in the olden days, I think John Naka told me, Glenn, you need to get bigger. <laughs> we, so we did for a while, but I just can't lift them anymore. Oh, I need help. So these, these, these uh, the, the strata's are all? I can pick them up by my one hand. All these are volunteers. This That's guy. really cool, the shari and the movement in it. That Thank looks really cool. Thank you. They're all, and this is a prostrata. It's brown because I've pinched it constantly. It needs to grow out, but I love the deadwood, the shari, and the hollow trunk. So what's your favorite shoheen that you have? My favorite shoheen might be this one because this was also from the front yard. It's got a fairly thick trunk, and I did a lot of carving on it. But we've debated... The front. This could be the front too, because it's a nice <laughs> fat, but I like the deadwood on this. That's really cool. Thank you. And so, so I can lift them with one hand. So it's the benefit of a shoheen. Yeah. And these are twisted pomegranates that I grew in the ground for many years. Cuttings from uh, Maryville Balandonk's yard. I grew them in the ground. They've had a fungus problem this year. This year's been really weird around here. And so I think this is fungus. But that, so right now I'm just letting them grow wild. Get some health. Get yeah, some get, get some health. And then next year we'll try training them again. So Glenn, how did you get into bonsai? How, how did you get into this art form? Oh, my, my interest was when I was at USC School of Dentistry uh, way back in the late 60s, 70s, early 70s. I went over across the street to Exposition Park and I saw the California Bonsai Society exhibits and they had these wonderful California junipers, all twisted and big. And so I went over there and that really got me in, uh, into it. And then I took classes eventually from Harry Harao and then Harry would take me digging like he did everybody. He took, he took a lot of people digging. He had a great art. And then I took classes with John Naka, Kenji Miyata lately, and now it's just me. <laughs> That's awesome. So this is one of my first ones, my Cascade, but it was really sick. I think um, I, repot I had some help repotting it last year, and it's, it's coming back, but it, I think it had twig girdlers or something. A really tough year. But it's coming back. You don't worry about earthquakes at all. I see it's not tied down. No, I don't. But I should. I should, <laughs> shouldn't I? It's just. And, and how do you like your stands? I, if, if I like these a lot because they're stable. They're set in concrete. Okay. So yeah, but I probably should tie them to the post. And my my uh, kenga uh, my uh, bunjin 
this originally started out as a Prostrata five gallon juniper that went off to the side. And I've, over the years, I've just brought it down and down and down and down and down. And like Sally says, I've been torturing it. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's fun. And then this one is a grafted uh, shimpaku onto a, a San Jose juniper. Fred Mihara did the grafting for me, grafted in four spots. I chose two, and uh, this is the result over the years. But I need to, needs attention. Prostrata, and this is a volunteer from the front yard. I think the volunteer is kind of cool. They, these these procumbens nanas really do root easily ground layering themselves. And the foliage is really awesome looking. Thank you. Thank you. Eventually, you see the wind's really been blowing this way, so it's going to go off that way. Awesome. And uh, my greenhouse is for the sick trees. Um, and, and I use this. This is a this was called a Taiwan, a Taiwan wax leaf fig. I got a cutting from Bob Maeda up in Huntington Beach years ago, and this is the result. Last year I took the top off because it was getting too thick. What's it called one more time? It's Ficus taiwanensis crossed with, uh, what's the small one, Microphylla. That's interesting. It has fruit on it. Papa Kanachiro uh, grew them over in Hawaii. And, and so Bob brought it back. Does the fruit stay white? Or Th this is the, 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 it turns white. Uh, this is the first year that it's had so much fruit on it. It's really different. I've never seen a, a ficus that actually has Mm -hmm. fruit on it usually um, I need to take the wires off pretty soon because they, they really good. Cut, they cut, in pretty they cut into the ficus really fast and then this is the stracifolia or, or uh, what are they nerofolia I don't even they're, know what they're, they're, they're I, I, I trimmed this back this year quite a bit because this branch was getting way too thick it, it, I could have air layered it off I thought for a while but I thought maybe I'd just try to keep it so I, I cut deeply onto it, and I put some sealer on it. And as you know, ficus really weep. So uh, that's why the black. But it's growing. It's coming back. And I'm going to let it grow wild. This one grew wild out again to heal. Is that an azalea? Th this, yeah, this is uh, my Takasago. It's been a long time. I love Satsuki. Love so, Satsuki. So, um, how do they do here in San Diego? Uh, in this environment, they do well. Uh, I plant them in 100% canuma soil. I think they love the as, as acidity. Um, if you plant it in normal potting soil, they always get root rot. Oh, is that what it mm -hmm. is? So, uh, that's my Takasago. Uh, Nuccio's grows a lot of azaleas. And their Nuccio's uh, blue, blue Moon is really strong. I would recommend that for people getting into Setskis. So are you with, with the, so here's a debate with, um, with azaleas. Oops. Do you, um, do you change it out of their native soil? Because um, Nuccio uses like peat moss. Yeah. And then with Canuma, do you? Do you convert it to canuma? I, I use the hose and I pretty much wash the old soil off. I, I almost bare root them. And I try to repot my Setskis in January. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I know that they always say after flowering, uh -huh. but I bare root them in uh, January using the hose and I gently wash off all the old soil that's coming off. And uh, I'm going to put it in my pocket. <laughs> and pot them in 100% canuma. Uh, I'm starting to put a little bit of sand or something else in because canuma gets expensive for those oh, bags. Yeah. Yeah. But it, but they do well. It's okay yeah. once you bear root them. Yeah. See, this is this is 100%. I grew this uh, Osakazuki from cutting, wired it, like Richard Ota taught me, and uh, this is 100% canuma soil. Wow, that's. I haven't tried it yet. A lot of people say don't. I'm like, well. Oh, now, now I know that someone has tried it and it does work. I'm in your area, they will grow really well up there. Awesome.
awesome. Yeah. What's your favorite tree? I mean, we're walking through your, your collection now. What, I know you have many trees, but what's probably one or two trees that probably brings your best memories? Well, I like the histories involved with trees. So this, this uh, 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 what do they call it, uh, raft, I started from a single tree and s s leaned it over and it rooted along there and potted it. So I like my raft, uh, uh, Catlin Elm. And I like this bougainvillea because, like I said, it's got the memories of the past. This was in an old front yard in uh, San Diego. And the forest here, so, I don't know, favorites? It's like choosing your favorite kid. It's hard. I know a lot of people say, I can't choose one. <laughs> it's like food. So I, I just enjoy working with them all. You know, for instance, this is a... a pomegranate that I've grown from cutting and I've wired it and puts a lot of twists in it. When it gets this big around someday, somebody's going to have a nice tree. Someday. Someday. But until you get to enjoy it. Kenji Miata always used to say, in the future. <laughs> in the future. And I like that. I like my femina because this it reminds me of my mother and me. And then this is an old timer semi-cascade. It has looked better, but it's, it's coming back. You know, we need a good winter rain. Then probably, I guess one of my favorites is the black pines, Japanese black pines down here, because they're so difficult to grow, so I'll show you those. Where are we, by the way? I mean, um, San Diego. This is Encinitas, Encinitas, California. So coastal I mean, the ocean is about three miles that way, west. So we get a lot of May gray, June gloom, which encourages the fungus, but it keeps things cool. Yeah, so you're lucky that you don't get the 110 oh, yeah. you get out. Oh, boy. I don't know. Yeah, they wouldn't grow well out here. but uh, So I guess this may be one of my favorite trees, this Japanese black pine, because uh, branches are in proper spaces. I, I, it was weak last year, so I, l I didn't do any cannel pinching, pruning, but I pulled a few needles. And it's an old tree just by that bar. It's, it's an, Look old, at that bark it's an there. old tree. I grew it in the ground. Up front was the growing grounds, and it looks like the moon now because it moonscape because <laughs> bomb craters. <laughs> so, how did you get away with growing trees in the ground uh, with your wife? Because I try to go trees in the ground in the, in the front in the yard, and my wife's like, get rid of them. I don't like the whips in the front. So how did you get away with that? Well, you have to hide them. You know, <laughs> hide them in some uh, area that's not involved. See, I wouldn't grow a bonsai stock up in the front yard, up by the pool pond, because that would be a no-no. But out here, they were kind of hidden. Oh, okay. I so, think find a hidden spot. So I, I, I did it wrong, because I probably right in the front yard, right where you walk up. So that's yeah. a no-no. Yeah. Okay. Wives don't like that. That's a, that's a great that's the a great bosses tip. Don't. Okay. <laughs> so that's probably one of my favorites. It needs you got attention. Some beautiful trees. Look at this. Let's take a shot down the down the alleyway here. And I still hand water. You see my can down there that I brought back from Japan many years ago, and I still hand water with rainwater on my rain chains, catch it in big buckets. What's your favorite memory of uh, Harry? Oh boy, I think, I think the drive out to the digging grounds, uh, Harry would always bring food. He'd always bring crackers and munchies and stuff. And, uh, and he'd, then he'd sleep and I'd drive. He had, he had many drivers over the years and those guys would all get out there tired. I used to come from Encinitas up to Huntington Beach. Wait, at what time did you leave your house to get up to Harry's? I left about 1 a.m., got up to Harry's. <laughs> I remember one time I stopped along the freeway and poured myself a cup of coffee and a highway patrolman stopped by and said, what are you doing? <laughs> are you okay? Yeah. Just need some coffee. So uh, yeah, uh, Harry, Harry was a kind man to a lot of different bonsai people. A lot of bonsai people uh, owe Harry Harao a debt of gratitude for getting them involved. Um, wonder if, if you had an opportunity to 
tell one advice to your younger self? If you can travel back in time to tell yourself an advice about bonsai, what would you, what would you tell yourself? I think the most important thing is don't kill so many. Keep them alive. I killed a lot of trees. <laughs> I think we all, yeah. I think we all kill a lot of trees. John, I, I think I told you the story of John Naka had a student that said, John, what's wrong with this tree? It doesn't look good. It's dead. And he said, you killed it. <laughs> so I think uh, if I were to tell myself, I'd say concentrate on keeping them healthy. If they don't look good, let them grow. Let them grow wild or re and repot them in the proper time. Awesome. This, uh, we'll, we're going to go to the front in a minute so you can see check that with his wife. Um, and we'll, we'll be back. This is Glenn's house. Check this out. What a beautiful Japanese garden. Really ins inspirational here. Look at this. Look, watch. This is what he walks into every day. With a koi pond with a Japanese black pine. How can you not get more iconic than that, Glenn? Really? I am jealous. Really? I am jealous. And my helper over there is just, she's really, you're feeding her fish. Let's go through the front really okay. quick. This is beautiful, Glenn. We'll talk to Sally right as we uh, right. turn that corner there. An antique stone lantern that we got years ago. Those are hard to come by, by the way. I've been trying to look for one, and they are tough to come by now. They are, yeah. And we love the lava one that's on the out in the water. And last year, uh, I bought this. That's a tsunami, a weeping tsunami over there. And it hasn't done real well, but I put it in your, uh, bought it at Ted Schwartz's. Oh, well, you sale. bought one. Oh, you bought one. Yeah, I bought one of those that was in 15 gallons and planted it there. Joni bought one and donated to the, uh, yeah. the San Diego Park, or the, yeah. the White Alamo Park, I heard. I can't it, wait to see it there. It should do well out there. Yeah. And of course, you have this one wonderful waterfall all right sally you're really the boss lady here well we have 10 some of them were born in the pond let's see these two were born in the pond and that one was born in the pond and this one right here was born in our pond and we just got a few new ones to honor my parents who just died in the last few years. What's your favorite part about the, your garden here? It's beautiful. I have to admit, it's very beautiful. Well, we love the, the pond that comes into our house almost and the fish who come to feed and we can see them as we're drinking our coffee and we have every year we have two or three nests of the hummingbirds right here in this tree that Glenn takes care of. You can probably see some of the old nests and it's just really fun watching them come in and pick up all the spiders and feed their babies and Glenn loves to poke in their nest and see how they're doing. Oh. <laughs> he won't leave them alone. <laughs> but, awesome. Yeah, and then when it rains, see the nice chain that we have over there? The water comes pouring down there, so it's just a lot of fun to be so close. To There's a hummingbird now wondering what you're doing, and <laughs> it's in its pond. It's trying to take a bath over the waterfall. Yeah, yeah well. so let's see if we can... Thank you for inviting me over. I yeah. am jealous. Glenn, thank you for your time today. I well, can't well. I can't thank you guys enough. And this is a very beautiful garden. I hope you guys enjoy. People, if you like this uh, video, like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you all later. You're welcome anytime. Yeah, bring your wife. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs>